What's poppin' everybody? It's time for another vinyl update. I haven't done one of these in a while because I've been really busy. In fact, I haven't done many of any videos in a while because I've been really busy. And uh, over the past few months, I've bought some records and CDs, but uh, I just haven't had the chance to make a video on them. So I figured in this video, what I'll do is I'll just go over the newest ones that I've bought and uh, then I'll go over some of the ones I bought a, a while back and uh, yeah so this is just sort of going to be like a shootout video we'll just go through the newest ones first that I bought you know recently because I went to the record store um, late earlier this week and I was just like I haven't done one of those videos in a while I should probably do one so I was like I'll just make one on my albums I got this week and then I'll do one and then in the second half of the video I'll go over all the ones that um, I, I've i collected over the past few months and I'm going to try and make it quick going with the ones from a while back just because um, it's a lot of CDs to cover and I just think that maybe we should move faster just to so I can spend more time on the newest ones that I've gotten. Um, so yeah, um, earlier this week um, I was in Nashville for a gig with my band, and um, we we played the show and everything, and after the show I realized, oh yeah, there's a great record store down here called The Great Escape, and I was like, I'll just go down there, check it out if I find anything, and then uh, I'll get it. So I went down there after the gig, and I found, first what I saw was this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if, you, if you're much as a fan of him as I am. It's, it's, uh, it's John Frusciante, the John Frusciante EP. This is a very, actually, this is a very rare CD. This is actually a promotional CD. It's not actually like an album. It's promo only. It wasn't, it's not really for sale. And it's very rare to find this. And I looked, I was looking in the F section for Frusciante, you know, just me being me, because I'm the, you know, enthusiast I am about him. And I was looking in the F section for him, and I look under, I can't remember, I think it was the Foo Fighters, and this was in there, and I was like, hey, well, what the heck, and it was, um, it has Going Inside on here, um, it has Someone's and Moments Have You, so it's like a, it's like a single for, to record water for only t 10 days, and I think this was around 2000 when this came out, but yeah, it's really nice, it's got a, uh, I don't have any John Frusciante, I don't have any of his solo stuff in my CD or record collection, so it's a pretty big deal to get this, and I'm really surprised that I found this, to be honest, because you can rarely find his stuff in physical format, um, and especially at a record store in Nashville where, you know, it's used stuff, it's kind of crazy that somehow this ended up in there, so I'm really, really happy to have this, I listened to it, it's great, it's good old Frusciante, and I, uh, I love it. And yeah, it's got a nice picture of him on there with an acoustic guitar, wearing a beanie in a room. Um, if you want to see the back, it just has going inside someone's moments have you for the forthcoming Warner Bros. album to record on water for 10 days. And then on the inside, there's nothing really interesting in here, it's just white. And then you got the CD, which is a John Frusciante on it. So. I'm really happy to have this in my collection. I finally got one of his solo, um, some of his solo material. Oh, there you guys the camera. All right. <laughs> Hold on. All right, there we go. So, the camera just fell. Um, but, yeah, really happy to have this. I don't have any of his solo stuff um, on CD or in physical format. And uh, happy to add this guy to the collection. Um, I think this might be... I'm not sure, but this might be the first thing he released after... I know that there was several like EPs he did before, after his second album, Smile From The Streets You Hold. I know he did a Going Inside EP, and then this, and I don't know if which one came first, but this might be the first one he released before, you know, after rejoining the Chili Peppers, so it's kind of a big deal, but I'm really glad I found it. And uh, it's great, but yeah. Next, this one I have a lot to say about because this next, this next one has been it's about as big as an influence on me as John Frusciante. Um, 
and I just love their music. So, here's what we got next. Jeff the Brotherhood. Magic song. <laughs> um, you probably have no clue who Jeff the Brotherhood are, um, because they are very, very, very underground, very unknown, but such a freaking great band. I love them so much. I, I have a particular story about this band. Um, when I was about 12 years old in seventh grade, me and my dad went to a Jason Isbell concert in, uh, in down in Nashville at the Ryman Auditorium, and um, we went, and I was like, you know, okay, country music, whatever. And I was kind of just like, meh. But I was like, it's a concert, so might as well. And we went, and the band that opened for them were these guys. And I remember they came out, and they had, like, maybe five members on stage or something, and they had all these cool-looking instruments, and they were all, they had smoke machines, and it was like... Pink Floyd, but combined with Nirvana, if that makes any sense, it probably doesn't, but it was super cool. Like, I mean, I was just in awe, and by the time it got to the, you know, Jason Isbell playing, and they were done, I just, we just left, because I was like, man, I mean, I couldn't, it, it doesn't beat these guys, I mean, they were so good, I, I was automatically a fan from that moment on, and they played... It, they have such a wide range of genres from like power pop to punk to garage rock to like psychedelic. They have a lot of psychedelic stuff and experimental stuff is mostly what they do now. But yeah, they have a lot, the wide range of genres. I mean, they're they are one of my favorite bands of all time. And this particular album was what they were touring for in 2018, 2019, probably when I saw them. And they released this, I think it was 2018 when this was released, I think, yeah. And uh, the, they played the first song on, the second song on this record, sorry, um, Camel Swallowed Hole, and I was just like, oh my god. And I, I fell in love with these guys, I'm still a huge fan. They remind me of everything from, you know, Pink Floyd to Sonic Youth to 80s stuff, and it's just it's amazing and if you ever get a chance check these guys out I mean they they deserve so much more fame than they than they have and I think that's another thing that's cool about it it feels like it's almost intimate because they're they're so small on Spotify they only have like 50,000 monthly listeners and I really they're from Nashville it's two brothers although none of them are named Jeff because the band's name is Jeff the Brotherhood so that's that's a little ironic but um it's two brothers from Nashville, and they started a band, and they have other guys playing with them and stuff, and they, this album, for me, is just so, so, just blew me away when I first found these guys, because they were doing, like, 20-minute jams on stage and stuff, and it was so spacey and cool and psychedelic and weird almost, but I liked it because it was new to me at the time, because I was listening to a lot of Green Day and, like, The Offspring and stuff, and I was like... Yeah, I was getting tired of it, and we went and saw these guys, it was like, whoa. It just kind of opened me up to a whole other world. And, uh, yeah. But this album particularly, I, I listened to the whole thing, and it's just my favorite record. Probably one of my favorite records of all time. It has to go in my top five. I I really like it. It It's just so cool and so wild and out there and experimental, and it really... And they're just doing it because you can tell because they're just doing it because they, they like what they're doing, you know, and it's such a great freaking album. I love it. And I am so glad I found it because I, I couldn't believe it when I found it. I was like, what in the heck? They actually have physical vinyl, you know? And uh, it's called Magic Songs. Um, freaking an awesome album cover there. And uh, yeah, it's got the back on here. About 12 songs on here, and but some of them go for a long time. Because uh, most of them, you know, they're pretty, they're a lot like Pink Floyd on this album in particular. It's so different from them. They like took a way weird turn because they were doing like Weezer style stuff, like pop punk almost a little bit for a while there. And then they made this, and it was just I was just like, oh my god, this band. And uh, yeah, so Jeff the Brotherhood, check them out. This is a great album. I can't wait to listen to it. I haven't really had a chance because. Uh, I've been staying up till 1 a.m. every day watching sitcoms and playing guitar, but I, but I hope to listen to it soon. So, I'm really happy to have this on vinyl though, because it's one of my favorite albums ever. Um, 
Yeah, and then this next one we have here isn't... This isn't really mine, I actually just bought this for a friend, and I'm going to give it to her um, sometime soon. But I got her Sgt. Peppers because it was six bucks, and I was like, you can't go wrong getting Sgt. Peppers for six bucks. And it, I checked the quality, and it's great, and so I can't wait to give this to her, and I hope she likes it. So, yeah. Um, but that's all I really got um, this week. And then what we have from... Um, the past months where I haven't uploaded any vinyl updates are these CDs. Um, I got all these at McKay's and then a few of them uh, my mom got for me from Goodwill. I think I'm going to start out with the ones from Goodwill. Let me just find them here. So, um, yeah. Cool. Alright, so I'll just put these right here for a second. Um, but yeah, my mom went to Goodwill and, you know, just my mom being the awesome mom she is and being thoughtful, she was just like, she found some CDs and she found Van Halen, which is great freaking album, 1984. I, I mean, all these songs, Drop Dead Legs, you know, prob, um, Drop, Dead, Drop Dead Legs, Top Jimmy, Panama, Jump, um, Hot for Teacher, I'll Wait, you know, House of Pain, all these songs. I mean, I just grew up on this, my dad. Big Van Halen fan, and obviously Eddie Van Halen is the legend he is, and him dying, I've been looking for more Van Halen CDs and stuff, so I'm really happy to add this to the collection, because I, I grew up on this pretty much. It's a great album, freaking nostalgic too. Um, yeah, it's a cool, cool CD. I love, I love this album, because, man, this is when they were like, in their, in their prime, you know, like, I mean, look at these guys. <laughs> this is this is when they were on top of the world. Hey, that's a Van Halen song. Pun intended. All right. <laughs> so that's that's one. Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, greatest hits. You know, um, I love these guys. Another really nostalgic. My grandpa is a big Creedence Clearwater fan, and a lot of these songs on here. He had a CD. I think it might have been this very CD, and he would play it in the car. And, um, you know, raised on these guys. Country, they have like elements of, you know, folk, country, blues, rock and roll, and they just, they're great. I love them. Southern, southern rock right there. But, uh, yeah, it's got like pretty much all their hits on here, so I'm really happy to have this. Um, and then she got me John Lee Hooker, who's one of my favorite blues guitar players ever. And, um, yeah, he's one of the blues pioneers, obviously. Just, you know, back porch, scratchy, acoustic blues guitar for you. And um, he, you know, a lot of his stuff was covered by George Thorogood, and I really, I really appreciate John Lee Hooker. He's a great guitar player, and freaking, he was a freaking great guy, and I just, I love this music so much. So, um, yeah, I'm a big blues fan, so I was just like, what the hell, you know? Okay, so moving on to the ones I got on my own, um, we're going to start with this one. Uh, I got this at McKay's, um, Pablo Honey by Radiohead. Radiohead are one of my favorite bands ever. I'm a Radiohead fanatic. I love Johnny Greenwood and his guitar playing. He's one of my favorite guitar players ever. And, uh, you know, they've opened me up to so many different musical worlds and genres, and I just, I got to thank my friend Colin for getting me into them and other bands like Blur and stuff, like, I, I owe him, and man, uh, yeah, I just love Radiohead, um, not a big fan of this particular album, if you're a Radiohead fan, um, like me, you know why, it's a pretty bland album, I'll say that, and it takes, it's very hard to get through, I'll say that, but there are a few songs on here, Creep, I'm a huge fan of Creep, but it's just, you can tell that they were still trying to figure out their sound on this one, and... I mean, if they didn't have this album, they wouldn't have OK Computer, they wouldn't have Kid A if it wasn't for this album. And, uh, you know, they didn't, they were kids. I mean, look at this picture. They're like, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is not my favorite album, but I do, I do like Radiohead and stuff. And next we got, it's Cream. Um, Favorite Cream album, right here. I love Cream so much. Eric Clapton's one of my favorite guitar players. Um, just like he is every other guitar player out there in the world. is He's probably one of the most influential blues 
rock guitar players of all time, and this this album really rocks, and I love it. So, yeah, I, I figured I'd get this one. Um, next, we got another Radiohead album. We got Hail to the Thief. This one came out after Amnesiac, and uh, it was sort of a return to form because they it, there's a little bit more rocking songs on here. It's sort of a political album, too, but uh, I haven't had a chance to listen to this one all the way through, but I'm hoping to soon. Um, it's, a, it's a great album as much as I've heard off of it. A lot of these songs are really good. Um, here we go. Next, we got Jimi Hendrix, one of my... You know, I'm a fanatic about Jimi Hendrix as much as I am radio. I wrote out Chili Peppers, one of the greatest guitar players to ever live. And this is actually a really cool album because it's, it's a bunch of covers. And he did a lot of covers from his favorite guitar players. It's a bunch of unreleased covers. Like he did one of, um, he did a B.B. King cover. He did a, um, he did a Muddy Waters cover on here. He did uh, a lot of other covers on here and uh it's really cool to have this because it's him you know just looking up to his idols it's called blues and it's, it's just classic blues stuff it's a lot less out there for jimmy but it's great good good blues music on here and so you can see the front and then you got the back here um oh yeah and i didn't show hair to hail the thief but uh that's what the album cover is and then you have the back here um Alright, next we have more Radiohead. <laughs> In The Benz, Radiohead. This has got to be one of my favorite Radiohead albums ever. Um, this is what, this was their second album, and it took a turn for them because it was has a lot more art rock on there. And a um, few of these, they're just, it's so good. It's, it's an alt rock album, but it has some art on there, and uh, it's got so many great songs. I think every song on here is my favorite and I love it it's a great album and the album cover is so cool I don't know if I've ever seen a cooler album cover than that it's weird but it's really cool and I I like it and, and for some some reason it wildly goes along with the picture and uh, yeah this was this is a really great album and uh, I love this album here's the back and it's, it's a freaking great album um all right, last but freaking not least, another favorite Radiohead album. If you don't already know, I'm a Radiohead fan. <laughs> but this has got to be um, one of my favorite Radiohead albums ever. I don't know. I I haven't heard all of Radiohead stuff, so I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard all their albums all the way through yet, but uh, I don't know if which one's my favorite Radiohead album yet because I haven't heard them all. But this one I have heard through several times. I This album... I gotta give it to this album because this was the one that came after. Um, actually, wait. I think I got this. I didn't get this at. Uh, yeah, this isn't even supposed to be being reviewed right now. But uh, I fall asleep to this album all the time. But I got this before I got these, so I don't know why this is in the pile. So we can include this guy. I already did this one in another in the last vinyl update I did. Huh. I don't know. I think it was just me being me. I picked it out anyway. Um, but yeah, that's um, all the stuff I've gotten ever since. I haven't done much record shopping um, this month or last month, but I'm hoping to do it soon since I'm making more money now and it's summertime and everything and I have some money to spend. So I'm hoping to do more of that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm really glad I have these albums, and uh, I'm happy to give Sgt. Peppers to my friend, and uh, yeah, it rocks, and uh, I guess I'll see you later, so see ya.